May I come in, sir? Introduction about yourself. My name is Nishra Batun. I'm from District Kishwar. I did my schooling from Islamia Farida High Secondary School, Kishwar. I did B in Electrical from Mahan Bhattachar College of Engineering and Technology, Jammu. My hobbies are writing Urdu poetry, singing Kashmiri songs, listening to ghazals and Kashmiri music, cooking Kishwari cuisines. This is my fourth attempt in the interview. I'm facing the interview. And I'm married and I have two kids. Nasha, before we come to the moot point, tell me how do you stay motivated? This is your fourth attempt. Sir, uh, whenever I face a failure, my family is my biggest support and they it is it is a collective dream. It is not just my dream, it is a collective dream. My family keeps me motivated. Plus, whenever I face a failure, I want to improve myself. The willpower to improve myself, that is what keeps me going. And uh, on, on the day of result itself, I feel very low. But the next day, I know that I have to restart. So I just forget the failure and start again. That's what keeps me motivated. Since you have been from an engineering background, so why only civil services? Sir, civil services was always it's always in the mind of in the back of the mind of every candidate, I think, because mm -hmm. it is the highest state civil service. And also my desire to serve in various fields to make a positive impact on the society. That's what uh, what motivated me to uh, apply for civil services. Plus the job stability and security it, uh, it offers. That is also one of the reasons. But you get the same in any engineering field. Engineering is a professional. Sir, but the job. the spectrum to uh, provide services that is broader in this civil services. So, yes, sir. So, uh, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how long have you been married and how old are you kids? Sir, I got married in 2014. And my eldest son is uh, he will be nine years old this year, and my youngest son he will be seven years. He is seven years old right now. How do you balance preparation and taking care of it? So like I said, my family supports me. There is support from the family. Uh, plus, uh, I I think I am a good manager of time, so that's how I manage time and take care of my family side by side with my studies. Uh, what do you think about this uh, women representation in administration? Because as we have seen, uh, the number of women that make it to the civil services and both at the central level and the state level, it is now of course improving, but the representation is still low. Uh, how do you think we can improve the representation of the women? Because you happen to come from, you are a married woman, you have other responsibilities, but still you manage to come and this is your fourth interview, which is quite, I think, encouraging. So what do you have to say about it? Sir, uh, first of all, I would like to mention one of the IS officers from my district, uh, Ms. Uh, Sahadi Shazgar. So, I think success of one uh, woman in the field, it motivates and inspires other women. So, uh, I think that is one of the points that the, that the women who can, uh, who are able to keep going, they should keep going, not for their own sake only, but for the sake of the whole women community. Uh, in addition to that, there should be opportunity. Uh, there should be improvement in the education system. There should be proper counselling uh, system in place to guide women who want to do something in various fields, not the civil services. There should be a proper counselling system for them, and financial assistance systems, scholarships should also be there to to motivate, to encourage women who want to do better in this field. So you are uh, you are basically uh, you have done engineering in electrical, yes, uh, right? Yes, so over the last many years, in fact, I think this year only, we have seen a lot of power outages in Jammu and Kashmir. What is the reason for that? Sir, the power deficit, the supply and demand mismatch is the reason. However, we we are the power, the, the uh, UT of Jammu and Kashmir it is the power hub of uh, India. But we are not utilizing the electricity that we are generating. Plus, we have not tapped the whole potential. Do you think we are self-sufficient as far as our uh, generating capacity is concerned? Sir, we have a potential. We have we, uh, the hydroelectric potential itself in our state is 20,000 megawatts. And, uh, but we have only been able to utilize uh, some 3,000 something megawatts of that. No, but what is the reason behind the mismatch? Sir, are we power deficit or are we power surplus? We have, uh, we have, as I said, there is much potential. We are no, not, not talking about the potential. Yes, sir. I'm talking about as of right now. Are we a power we deficit? Power deficit UT? That, that is the reason for power outage. What we is the uh, coming back to it? What is the difference between the generation and the demand side? Sir, there is some 54 percent 
Can you tell me the name of a few that we are developing? Some projects Thank that you. we are developing. Some projects that we are developing that are currently under construction. Yes, so, there is one thousand megawatt uh, uh, hydroelectric project in district Kishwar, Pakal Dools project. We have Rakli project in Kishwar district itself that is eight fifty megawatts. We have Kiru and Kwar coming up. Karthai project is there. These are the projects that are coming. Shabal Kot in Yasi district that is what we are I'll ask two questions and so you can continue, right? Uh, there was a recent judgment by Supreme Court about the maintenance of women. Uh, do you find some parallels between this judgment and Shahbanu case? What is Shahbanu case? Have you heard about it? Yes, yes, yes. The Shahbanu case uh, was in 1985 case uh, where a woman, uh, a woman uh, sought uh, maintenance from her husband. That is the case it was related to. It is uh, the recent judgment and Shahbanu case. They are linked to each other because. The, uh, there is an act, Muslim Women uh, Protection right. of Rights on Divorce Act 1986, which provides for maintenance of women, but only up to a certain period. That is three months. That is known as Idhar period. But the Shabano in Shabano case, and there was another case, Daniel Latifi case. Mm -hmm. In that case mm -hmm. also, it was provided that the husband is not responsible for providing only maintenance to the women, but also provide a fair and reasonable provision for her entire life, not maintenance, but to provide for her there should be some provision so uh, the act of 1986 it was overriding the the supreme court judgment of shahbanu case 1985 and the recent court has said that the act of 1986 cannot override the judgment that was given in shahbanu case and a husband should be responsible for the maintenance for entire life One not in the form of money but as a yes okay. so the last so, question uh, yesterday i think uh, as i think you are you have public administration as yes. your option right uh, yesterday only Gujarat in Gujarat, a senior, uh, I think, uh, civil servant, he was prematurely retired from the service of the government. What do you mean by premature retirement and why does government actually resort to such measures? So premature retirement is uh, when uh, uh, an officer is uh, dismissed from his duties, is, for, is uh, asked to retire before his uh, superannuation or reaching a retirement period or completing his full services. Uh, it may be for compensatory reasons, it may be for compassionate reasons like uh, for an, as a punishment for an offence. Uh, so what is the article of the constitution of India which governs? Uh, which, sorry, sir. The article of the constitution of India which empowers the government to exercise its right to uh, compulsorily retire. Uh, so, uh, there are two terms that we use for retirement. One, as I mentioned, uh, there is retirement uh, and the other is voluntary retirement. Sure. So, what are the two uh, terms? What are the differences between these two terms? Sir, retirement is uh, uh, when you uh, when the, uh, uh, an official reaches a uh, an age of superannuation or completes his full service. Voluntary retirement is retirement where uh, he he has to go through the retirement when he completes the service. But in case of voluntary mm -hmm. retirement, he can voluntarily asked to be retired before the completion of that but there are certain conditions he, he has to complete at least 25 years that will be so sure. uh, since you have mentioned uh, in your interest that you are cooking uh, Kashmiri and Kishtawari cuisine just Kishtawari Kishtawari cuisine so how do you define Kishtawari cuisine and what are the differences between the normal Kashmiri cuisine and Kishtawari cuisine so Kishtawari is a mountainous area the geography of the district is different from Kashmir, plus the availability of food also differs, so that uh, that causes a difference in the food habits of people. So, some of the dishes are, for example, Sosvagra is cooked in Kishwar, Hol is cooked in Kishwar. The reason for cooking of those particular dishes is that in winters, it is not possible to grind the crops with the corns or uh, grains because of frozen water. Because mostly it was ground in the water mills. So that is why people used to put whole cereals. So that is what makes the soil okay. different. Can you tell me something about the topography of Jammu and Kashmir together? Like what are the basic divisions of uh, this state in terms of the geography? Sir, in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, the Kashmir region and the Kishwar region, these are the mountainous region, Pir Panjal range region. Uh, these are the uh, lower Himalayas. Not sure, sorry. And the Kishwa, uh, sorry, Jammu region. It is the uh, Sivalik region. Mm -hmm. It is not. It does not have high mountain ranges. It is mostly plain area. 
Okay, so you're uh, missing one basic point about uh, one part of the union territory being the value. So, uh, which uh, area are we referring to? The Kashmir area of the value. Tell me, uh, if you were selected as a civil servant, what are the qualities that you would uh, bring to the services that you think you would already have? Sir, I, I believe that I am the most hardworking, dedicated and consistent uh, candidate for this examination. So I will bring those qualities to the uh, civil services. Uh, plus, uh, I am a good time manager because I am a mother of two and I am managing so, uh, studies as well along. So I am a good time manager. Plus, uh, I, I don't give up easily. So that is one of the qualities I will be bringing. Uh, can you tell me what are some of the basic uh, administrative issues or governance issues that JNK is facing right now? Sir, first and foremost issue is the issue of corruption. Uh, in addition to that, we have a uh, we have shortage of skills that are required for doing different jobs. Plus, digital divide is there. We we are we are on the way to achieve the goal of e-governance we are on the way but we have just started so digital divide is one of the reasons and uh, connectivity causes administrative troubles because there is difference in topography some of the reasons are not connected as well as the other reasons so these are some of the issues uh, you must have heard in the news recently we have seen many uh, terrorist attacks taking place in jammu division yes. so what is the reason for uh, this shift in the terrorist attacks in JNK? Sir, it, uh, the infiltration has increased over the years. Infiltration, the, the terror financing, uh, there has been put a curve, but it is not, we are not still, we are still not there. So, terror financing is still going on. Uh, plus, the, the proxy war, proxy war is going on, where the non state actors are participating in this. Uh, and also, uh, there is uh, maybe disengagement of youth in constructive activities is also one of the reasons. No, but why do we see it in one specific region? Like Kashmir was known for militancy and terrorism. Yes, why do we see a shift towards the Jammu division? Uh, uh, in my opinion, there has been a tightening of security and uh, and a very aggressive uh, aggressive attack on terrorism in Kashmir division or in Jammu division. There was there has never been an issue of terrorism at such scale as was in Kashmir. So maybe Jammu does not have such tight security system as, as has, well. has yes, yes, I'll just add to this. You said that infiltration has increased. Is this factually correct? Has infiltration increased? Sir. I'm talking per numbers over the past say ten years. Sir, have yes. the number of attempts at infilt infiltration increased or have they decreased? Sir over the past over the past week I read at least two, three news where in Kupwara an infiltration attempt was foiled. Plus, uh, there was also uh, there was also a report by police itself that infiltration has increased. Mm -hmm. So that makes me believe that there has been infiltration. In Asia, we have a fundamental right, the right to protest religion. Now, in context of this fundamental right. Tell me, how much do you support the recent Supreme Court judgment? It says that a woman is entitled to maintenance even after the divorce. Yes, what, are, what is your take on it? Sir, uh, right to profess religion, it is also, uh, there is also another right, that is right to equality and uh, right against exploitation. So I think for the sake of women, there has to be balance between two rights. So, for the sake of women's security uh, itself, so that balance has to be rights because rights are not absolute. There are restrictions and there are uh, provisions for for exemptions or for uh, uh, for uh, keeping it light for the sake of uh, upgradation or up, uh, upliftment of any section. So do you mean a fundamental right can override another fundamental right? But there has to be balance between two rights. I am not an expert. It is for the courts to decide. Your, your opinion. Yes, sir. So, in my opinion, there has to be balance. One right, in order to support or in order to encourage one right, another right should not be violated or discouraged. That's my opinion. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
how do you define e-governance? Because you said it in one of your answers. Mm -hmm. What is e-governance? So e-governance is a part of governance where uh, we use information and communication technology for providing services to the people and carrying out the work of the government. Right, absolutely. So, if we, uh, sir, asked you a question about uh, the reason that uh, administrative issues that we are facing, right, right, and you mentioned corruption and uh, sort of that we are on the way to e-governance, but we are not there yet. So, if we look at it historically. Jammu and Kashmir right now is among the leading union territories and states with the number of online services being provided to people. But do you think those uh, services are actually having an impact in bridging the digital divide? Because you mentioned it as one of the reasons as being an administrative issue. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, they pro these processes, they cannot just be solved. These problems cannot be solved overnight. It will take time. So there has been an improvement. We have many services like there is JK Samadhan to provide services to people. In a, there has been digitization of land records and uh, offices, government offices. So we are there, but there is still uh, some. Uh, there are some things to do. For example, people are not aware that they can seek such services from government. They are not aware that they can check the, the records or the statuses of their land records online also. So that awareness mm -hmm. also has to be created. There has to be proper system. We have to uh, keep in mind the cyber security of Jammu and Kashmir uh, uh, because because we are already uh, Jammu and Kashmir has been an insecure region uh, uh, in terms of uh, terrorism also. So cyber security is one of the issues that has to be uh, that has to be checked. In addition to that, uh, there has to be proper infrastructure. Not all the uh, villages, far flung villages, are connected to internet. That has also to be. Look that, look that. Okay. One more question I'll ask. Uh, as we are from Kishtawar, right? Yes, uh, we see now and then these uh, horrific accidents taking place. I think last uh, week only four members of a single family died. What is the problem with the road connectivity in Kishtawar? Sir, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Kishtawar being a mountainous region, the road terrain is, uh, uh, I would not say rough, but it is tough for a new driver particularly. Plus, in addition to that, there are reasons like uh, there is no proper uh, proper check on the uh, registration of old vehicles are still running. The licensing system, there is there has to be accountability in that also because many drivers drive without license. Overcrowding is one of the problems. What is the way out? Like, how can we improve the connectivity of Kishtawar with the uh, rest of parts of this Jammu Kashmir? Sir, connectivity, connectivity has improved over the years. We, ha we are building tunnels. Mm -hmm. We have a tunnel from Khileni to Chineni. Uh, we have a proposed tunnel in Vailu uh, to connect Vailu with uh, Singapore area in Chhatru. So those are some steps being taken to improve the connectivity okay. of the region. Alright. So uh, what is your service preference? Sir, administration. So tomorrow if you are selected for the police services, what are the challenges that you think you would be facing and how would you be managing those challenges? Sir, first of all, uh, I never enter an interview thinking that I won't be selected for the preference that I have I am, I am, have opted for. So in case I am not selected in that service and uh, I have to take police services, I will work accordingly. I will I'll so try to What are to the challenges that you think you would be facing? So my first and foremost problem will be my time man management as I have a family to look after side by side and police services require self-investment much more than the other administration. So that will be my foremost challenge. And Physically also I think I'll have to And how are you, uh, like what do you think, how would you manage those challenges? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll try to manage my time better. Okay. My family will be there to support me, they have supported me. Okay, so one last question from your uh, electrical uh, background. So how do we distribute electricity in India? Like what is the system of distribution? The electricity is first produced in the power stations. Okay. Then it is uh, it is uh, supplied to the grid station. From grid station it goes to the substations. From substations to the transformers and from transformers it goes so to the So there is something like uh, we have a northern grid. So you have all the uh, idle power projects yes, sending their electricity to the northern grid and from yes, there you go to the substations. To, so from the northern grid you uh, send the electricity back to the states. So it is the NHPC which produces and manages all those things. So 
Do you think that there is something that is required in terms of reform in this electricity distribution of northern grid and all the central grids that we have? Yes, sir. Sir, as the infrastructure, when as as it becomes older in the infrastructure, there are more losses, leakages. So it leads to loss of uh, distributed power also. So infrastructure must be updated from time to time. Plus our region being a mountainous region and ecologically unstable region, uh, there are <coughs> incidents of landslides, there are earthquakes which damage the uh, infrastructure. So it has to be strengthened and uh, uh, to prevent those losses, there has to be updation from time to time. Uh, since uh, there is a growing tourism sector in Jammu and Kashmir, so what do you think, what are the uh, challenges that this uh, sector is still facing and what are the implications of uh, more tourism, more tourists coming to Jammu and Kashmir, which is a ecologically fragile zone? So the challenges faced by tourism sector is first connectivity in some region. Uh, another is infrastructure, lack of infrastructure. Uh, then there is uh, lack of awareness, lack of awareness in the form of there are not advertisements or campaigns properly. For example, in, in Kishwar itself, I, I believe that the put, as much as the tourism potential of the place, it has not been tapped. So that, that is one challenge. And the implications of increased tourism can be, it can have an impact on the ecology and environment of the system. However, it will have a positive impact on the economy, but on the ecology as uh, we are already ecologically fragile system. So that may be impacted and also uh, employment will increase. That will be positive effect. Uh, just one this. What is the difference between a lumped parameter system and a distributed parameter system in circuitry? Sorry, sir, I have been out of touch for a really long time. Okay. Uh, then just tell me something about the current wars between Edison and Tesla. Sorry, sir. The current wars between Edison and Tesla, between alternating and uh, direct current, and how that impacted the way that we distribute electricity in our homes. Between AC and DC. Yeah. Do you are you aware of the current wars, the war between alternating and direct current? Not sure. Not sure. It's okay. So, what is the difference between AC and DC? So, AC, uh, AC current and DC current. Uh, AC current is the current that is generated by the uh, hydroelectric power stations. The uh, the current that we distribute in Jammu and Kashmir, it is AC current. So, uh, AC is easier to be distributed. Okay. Are you and sure? There are losses. There are less lesser losses as compared to DC current. Are you and sure that we use AC? Sir, it is distributed in AC form. Hydroelectric projects produce AC current. Solar projects produce and wind energy projects they produce DC current. So DC is uh, first of all you have to uh, you have to find uh, storage system for DC. And then the, in the case of distribution also there are more losses. So as uh, uh, when the, for the current to reach a longer distance, it will already most of the power will be lost. So DC has that one challenge also. And AC current can be upstepped and downstepped. That is one uh, through the transformer. That is one positive point. Uh, whereas DC current cannot be upstepped uh, in voltage. So that can also uh, be a, uh, be a prob trouble in the distribution process. So. Read up a bit on Russia, this. Do okay. you follow the international affairs? Should I read newspapers? Tell me what is excess of resistance. Sorry, sir. No, do you know how a proxy group, Hezbollah, Hamas, all are like united in confronting a particular entity? So, what's your take on this? How do you see the present scenario? Why do you think, let me rephrase it, why do you think it is heading? And how can we stop it? Sir, the, uh, the, uh, the current uh, this dispute going on in the uh, Middle East, it is it has three basic reasons behind it. Uh, one is the border security of Israel, Israel or Palestine. Second is the uh, uh, Israeli settlements in West Bank and Gaza. Third is uh, the uh, 
so these are the reasons these are some of the reasons so uh, the uh, these uh, non state actors that are acting against a particular entity these uh, these wars are known as proxy wars so proxy war i don't think in my opinion is not the solution i think there has to be uh, because it only leads to more war and more loss of life and property on both sides so in my opinion there has to be uh, there has to be uh, there has to be consultation there has to be uh, more talking there has to be there and international community particularly should participate should take part and should uh, should be a mediator in the issue between the two parties and find a peaceful solution rather than a violent one that's so what's your favorite poem sir i have I have read Faisal Ahmed Faisal. Okay, so Some what do you like about Faisal Ahmed? Sir, his poetry was versatile. Mm -hmm. he, uh, whenever you uh, read his poem, you would find a romantic touch as well as you know that it was filled with patriotism. Actually, so that is one style I like, and the simplicity in his poems. That so is, is there is there any difference uh, in the poetry that Faisal wrote before independence and after independence? So before independence, most of his poetry was romantic. Okay. It 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 has a romantic meaning also. Even after independence, when he wrote other poems, when you read it, if you don't know that it has to be a patriot in the patriotic sense, you will still find it you know, in romantic sense. But okay. that's patriotic. He changed the meanings of a few words. For example, for him, uh, his beloved was not some person; it was his country. Okay. So why sense. is it that uh, in Paz's poetry there is a Tinge or some uh, instances of situations like freedom, independence. Why do we see those things very much there in the poetry of Faz? Sir, in my opinion, Faz Ahmed Faz was a revolutionary. He was a he was anti dictatorship. Dictatorship. So that is why he thought that it was a dictator. He wanted his country to be free from dictatorship. So that is why there was that. Who was the dictator of the time? Who was the dictator that he was writing against? Yeah, I think. Alright, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you.